Good morning again, everyone. How y'all doing? So to recap, what we've been doing yesterday, we've been having an issue with the, well, with setting the state in one of our components, which is this one. Um, and the last thing I did was reach out to Stack Overflow. I asked my question there, and I had a nice answer from Drew Reese. I replied back to him. And he told me that maybe if I put my code up on Sandbox, which is this website right here, he might be able to better help me with the problem. So, three things we're going to be doing today. Um, well, hopefully three things. First, I would like to see whether or not it's going to be easy for me to um, migrate my code into Sandbox. And hopefully I can get some help from Drew Reese on fixing the problem that I've been facing. And second, we are going to watch this video about React routers. And we're, I mean, for, for the most part, I know how it works, but I just need to refresh my memory just to be sure that I'm not going to be doing it um, incorrectly. Uh, I might try to tackle it myself first without the help of the video to see like what I remember, what I don't remember. And after we've set up the React router, we're going to move towards uh, parsing. Oh, shit. I haven't been showing you. Play my bad, my bad. All right, so that's Code Sandbox. In case you were wondering, right? So uh, we're going to be watching this video. And yes, uh, this is the question that I've asked on, on Stack Overflow. And so... Um, once we've set up the re uh, React router, um, well, mainly the reason for that is because I want to try to parse the, the JSON file and render it into a map, a visual, you know, grid like this right here, but I don't want to delete this and nor do I want to write the code to parse the JSON within, you know, the same component where this is written, which is, I think, uh, the map right here. So I'd like to leave. I, I'd, I'd like to keep this intact. And um, essentially, what the React router is going to allow us to do is to um, um, navigate between uh, pages. And so we were gonna we're gonna have one page for this and then another page for the, the other map so i'll be able to switch back and forth between them and the code will be separated inside uh, inside my visual in my inside my visual studio so um everything will stay neat and everything so um and plus that will help us on the long run once we start implementing other um components like i don't know maybe we have a burger uh What's it called? A uh, burger icon up at the top left. And uh, that would bring up the settings and the menu and whatever it is. And if we decide to use it, we do. If not, we'll just delete it. But, um, yeah. So that's pretty much what we're going to be doing today. Um, let's see, what would I like to start with? What would I like to start with? Um, all right, let me let me see how difficult it's going to be for me to migrate my code into um, Code Sandbox. We, I'm going to try to that really quick. I'm, it's just a matter of copying and pasting. Um, I might have to like create the same component uh, folders that I have here. Uh, like I have map. Actually, it's probably just map. Yeah, it's just this one. And yeah, I'll have to copy... Well, this I don't need to copy it, but yeah, so it's just map, terrain square, and the map style CSS, right? 
Uh, Alright, so let's do that. Alright, so inside the source folder, I want to create a directory. We're going to call that directory something similar to what I did here, uh, and that's map. <clears throat> Excuse me. And inside map, we're going to create a file, and we're going to call it map.esx. That's what we're doing. Uh, the title can't... All right, now we got it. Copy this. Paste it in here. Okay, we don't need to import the player. Anyway, it's still empty. Uh, the terrain square, we're gonna have to import that next. What am I doing? File. We're saying terrain square dot tsx as well. Put in here. Save that. Import should now be working. I don't know what this act thing on top is. It's actually the first time I see that. What that is. API testing library. Okay. Right, I'm not sure what it is, what this is, to be honest. I mean, I'm reading it, but. Yeah, I, I still don't know. I'm not sure what that is, but I suppose we can safely take that out. It has to do with testing. And uh, finally, let's export or let's migrate the map text uh, dot CSS. Good. Now, all we need to render out the component. Our app.js, gonna calling it map, right? Oh, we just need to import it here. Import map. And that should do it. Oh yeah, I forgot that it's in a folder, so it has to be map slash map. There we go. Now we save that, and we get an error saying cannot find. styles map styles the CSS I have oh that's what I called it map styles all right all right we'll just remain rename that maps Yes, now we're talking. All right, so now it's working. Um, well, working, not working, but you know what I mean. But we're just gonna copy that. We're gonna send it over to Mr. Re. Hello. Really appreciate help. Fine. Code. 
think that's how you share it, right? There's no like share button or something. Okay. All right, so now I'll get some help from Reese. Hopefully he'll fix the code for me or at least teaches me about what it is that I'm doing wrong, um, how I can achieve what it is I'm trying to achieve. Okay, okay, so now we move on. Let's uh, take a few minutes to just go through um, the code, try to implement React Router to it and see whether or not I remember it. Um, um, over here, I think it's actually an app does this. We're gonna have to import a browser router. Right, as router. Then we're gonna import the switch and link. What else? Switch, link, router. I think it's router as well. Oh, no, no, no. There we go. From React Router. React Router something. React Router DOM, there we go. All right, so that I remembered. Then over here, what you want to do, you want to specify which components you want to have um, uh, with the ability to have like the navigation functionality. So what we do. Um, what do you call it? Sandwich them? I'll remember the word later, right? So we just put everything that we want to have the navigation functionality between the router tags. So now we have map, and then we're gonna have map two or map reloaded. Right, so now we have to import it over here and we're actually gonna have to create it as well because I haven't created it yet. So import map reloaded from um, map reloaded, right? And then we're gonna have to set the path for, path for paths, each one. So the path of the first one, I'm gonna I'm gonna treat it like it's a, it's a home page, and the path of the second one, I'm going to treat as second one, and we're gonna call that um, map two. It's just easier like that. Okay. And right, okay, so let's define map reloaded. Actually, I have it. We're gonna create it in the map folder right here. Call it map loaded. I'm gonna keep going with TypeScript. Even though I feel like I'm still not proficient at it. I'm gonna go for it, okay? And then, um, what do I want to do? Do I want to do a class or function? I feel like I'm gonna go with a function again. Uh, if I will look at map here, what I did here, terrain square. Well, part. that's what we're gonna do. So export, alt, a function. Name the function map loaded. Then we're going to start our code right here. Right, that should clear up any errors that we might have had. That's good. Okay. 
And then over here, um, let's just return something. Let's see if it works. Let's return. What are we returning? Map reloaded. Like that. That way we can see whether or not it worked. Okay, let's see what's happening here on the website. React router DOM can't resolve. Okay. Oh, it's route. Hold on, he didn't add something that had to do with. Maybe he did that later. All right, so let's take link out for now. But I remember there's there's definitely something that has to do with link. So let's just put route right now. Save that. Oh. Act route. Act. why it's throwing that error error because i don't think it should be throwing it um if the following command evolve it okay so we might not have the um package i think for go and open up in terminal and navigate towards directory all it over here right install react router dom Okay, that should fix it. I've refreshed this. Uh, all right, I'm gonna close the server and reopen it up again. We probably need just fresh it, so I'm gonna start again and hope. There we go. Okay, so map reload is showing up over here, and that's because it's not separated yet. Um. route okay okay All right, so he actually did an, another component that's called navbar or nav in which he um, places navigation. So I'm just going to call it navbar over here. Actually create a new folder and then create a file inside that called nav. Or going to Give it a TSX extension and here I'm gonna copy what he did over here.
you next time. Alright, he just wrote some inline uh, inline styling. I'm not sure why he did that, but he should be able to turn immediately. And what do we want to have the return actually? Um, oh, okay, so these this is where he placed all the links. Right, so. First, you got a nav, just like this. Inside the nav, you have. Logo. So we're going to import our packages. Link is declared, but its value never read. Just a second. I'll declare it. I'll read it. Over here, we do well. Um, we don't need to give it a class name just yet. And finally, he does two LIs, right? So... First LI will be. Map one. Second LI. Be map two. And I'm not going to worry about styling just yet, because uh, I don't think uh, it's going to make a big difference right now. We have bigger fish to fry. But the link we're going to place over here. That was a mess, okay, so there we go. All right, so now we have the links place and just need to make sure, I just need to understand again what the links were for because uh, I'm not sure I remember all right so we're we'll go through the video for a second okay so rather than adding an anchor tag that we would normally do we would import something from react router dom so let's import something from react router dom and here I can add curly braces and what I can import is something called link link like that and we can wrap around our allies in this link so let's add a link here Dom. so let's import right so it's effectively what allows you to switch between one um, one page to another, but instead of actually typing it into the URL, you make a button able to do that. So the route, the route creates the route for you so that like you can see the URL change, right? And when the URL changes, you switch from one page to another, but you don't want to write it into the URL, which is what the, what the route does. Instead, you want to create it, or you want to create a, um, um, feature where it allows you to click on a word that leads you towards that um, that URL. So that's essentially what link is. And here he's styling it and it has two. So, and say map slash link okay and over here it's supposed to take us to map flash map reloaded all right uh do i still need to find anything abjs Not find a declaration file for module React Router DOM. Uh, 
not sure why this is still throwing an error. We just installed it. I don't understand why it's giving that error again. Um, not find a declaration file for module react router DOM. Try npm i save dev. Okay, we're gonna try this actually instead of the thing that I just found on Stack Overflow. Okay. that fixes it once and for all okay and then npm start hey okay. uh, oh right uh, one thing we need to do is actually Take the nav and just put it in here. Do I need to import it? I think I probably need to import it. And nav from nav four. So we have to remove those actually from here and what you leave the nav. Then right below it we have a route. Find the path of that route. It should be first one should be this. Component. Oh, hold on. Did he have to import each and every component? He did. Okay. Uh... But when he says home over here, how does it... Okay. Okay, because he defined it over here. All right, now I see it. All right, so we're not going to do that. What we're going to say is we want the component to be equal to map instead. Close that up. Then we're going to do another route to other map, which is path of map. Slash map. Component. Oh, hold on. Actually, this defines what we're going to be, what we're going to have written the URL. So essentially all we need is actually this right here. Map. Close that up. And we were going to say map two here and map one over here instead of nothing. Let's save that. Okay. Um, Navbar, navbar. There we go. 
That's about map one, map two. Stacking. <laughs> Out of the frying pan and into the fire. But that's good to know though, like, that's an interesting problem. Okay, um... React link is stacking... I don't know what you even call it. URL uh, path? Wow. Alright, so React Router does not support relative locations when navigating. You will need to make two prop paths to the link absolute. If you need to create a, a path name based off of a current look of the of the current location, the component rendered by route has the current location injected as a prop. So you can access that as this.props.location.path name. Alright, so the two and the nav bar has to be absolute, and I think it is absolute. Hold on, let me just refresh my memory. What's uh, the difference between uh, absolute versus relative? Uh, philosophical question, more so than anything else. Oh, not React, uh, HTML? Relative link is relative to the current page. Of oh, example, it's right next to the current. Okay, not a big deal right now. Let's move forward. I'll fix it later. Um, as soon as we figured this out. Uh, what I want to know is why, oh, the switch, that's what I forgot. Okay, so essentially what's happening is that every time the, um, the router finds that, you know, every time it comes across something that is remotely similar to what is written here, it just, like, moves directly to that path and it doesn't you know check to see whether the whether or not you know like there's a two in the other one which makes it a different uh, uh page or not so i i think what we need to do here is write exact exact over here um do i need to switch i think i might need to switch I'm not sure whether or not it should be placed over here. Let me double check. Just puts the route. Switch. Like that. Now when we go to the... Not being rendered. what's going on here that since it's stacking not allowing the url there we go like it, it should it should have just map for it to go to map right so if i were to say map two would have the other map i mean 
Okay. Um, let me see if I can fix this up. Actually, let me see if our guy over here faced the same problem because I don't think he did. Actually, oh no, it's the other way around. What we're looking for is not the absolute path, we're looking for the relative path. So if we just do it like this. So it's slash map reloaded slash map. Oh no. Yeah. Right? Let's try it out. All right, it's working. The only thing now is that it's not map reloaded not rendering this which is what it's supposed to render but it is however rendering the map correctly what it is that's what it is i got it okay so it actually has to be um map two maybe let's try to see if i write map two here does it take me where i want it to take me yes why though <laughs> why did okay because okay i see because the component is essentially what defines where it goes okay so now we were able to separate these two components that's great um let me see if i can actually put these in a static div up on the top um i think the guy has some css that i can use i'm not super proficient at css um uh, what did he say what did he say he said nav all right, let's do this, okay? So we're gonna write here, we're gonna write, or we're just gonna have one nav, right? So we're just gonna have the CSS for it next to it over here. So a nav.css, let's see if that works. Okay, and then we'll import it over here. And over here, we'll define what nav should look like, and it should look like... Like this. Alright, I'd like to see what each one does, that way I can understand it a little bit better, right? So, um, display, flex... Nav. Get it right. Hold on, let's put it...
Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, we're doing it right. When you don't put a dot or a hash next to it, that means it's neither a class name nor nor an ID, right? It's the element. We're we're changing the element that is nav, essentially. So that should show us um something. Play flex. Slash, slash, uh, I would take a look. And before we do that, let's just kind of remove everything from the app. That's the SS. Gonna add these last names to the line. I have only one nav. Oh, just nav. Nav. I'm just gonna oh right. He did the same thing, right? Contest stage round and then the line. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we pretty much have it almost exactly the same. So, justify content, base around. See what that does. Huh. Well, I do think that they moved a little bit to the right, didn't they? Let's see uh, if that was the case here. I'm just going to remove Then I'm going to save it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so they moved around just a little bit, but I think, if I'm not mistaken, they are dependent on whichever container contains them. And it's essentially why they're behaving. Yeah, there we go. See that? The nav is actually part of this. What? Oh, no, no. It's actually the div for the nav itself. But then why is it dependent on the map? Like why is it why is it the div of my nav bar exactly equal this? I think it's because it's within the app. And the app is actually a grid that kind of limits where everything is. So essentially all I need to do is figure out a way to make the nav not affected by the CSS of the parent div. How to make child um, div not affected by CS parent. I do not want to inherit the child opacity from, yeah, it's something like that. Uh, instead of using opacity, set a background color with RGBA where it parents is. How do I apply it? No, I don't want opacity. Like, just give me something else. How to CSS to prevent child element from inheriting parent. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, you're out of luck. There is inherent. Inherit to copy a certain value from a parent to its children, but there is no property the other way around. Philosophy is at its best. All right, so how do we, how do we, how do we move that out of the app? Or, or I'll tell you what, maybe we can move the CSS for app. I take this out, what would happen? All right, this is like placed somewhere on the left for some reason. All right, but what if then I go to the CSS of the map styles 
and I say something like place content center. Place content center. And with a height of 50. Height 50 view heights. Right? Then we just that remove. Save that. Take a look at it. Closing. Navbar seems to be having a good time though, so at least we got that out of the way. Now we just need to figure out how to place the map in the center instead. Um, so I'm actually not entirely sure what it's dependent on. Maybe if... Maybe if... Right here. ID map, having map being called. So where is the grid being created? Let's find that out. Map style. Have squares. This is everything within the map, and this is the map itself. I feel like we need another div just to like contain the map, and we'll 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 style that the same way we had app styled. Is essentially this let's take these out go into our map give our map another div that contains it like so and then give it a class name of um, map container Map container. All right. So now we, when we style it here at maps, map styles, they uh, dot right dot map container. They play grid, whatever, whatever. Then we take this out. Save that. All right. Progress. Looking good. It's looking good. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're going to continue with the styling of our nav bar. For which we were taking reference from this guy's CSS. Uh, align items center. Let's see what this does. Align items enter right that didn't do much my question is why are they still above one another i thought justify content should like separate both from one another right oh i think i understood kind of nice when you start having like a lot of components that you're kind of managing um which is like super important to Make sure that you remember where everything is. Otherwise, 
I feel like if you start having too much that you need to be aware of many things that you have to remember and stuff like that you just kind of get um word in english well you just forget essentially where everything is all right so um speaking of which what were we what were we looking for right so nav supposed to be The UL, I think it has to do with the UL right here. Okay, so here, the width of like 50% and a fully flexed to the UL just to find content space around the line items. There we go. And what am I missing? The stupid, the dots, the stupid dots. Right, so that's essentially what separated them. I think it was the justify content for the nav links themselves, which he defined like so. I think he. Yeah, he said nav links like that. Sorry, uh, class name. Nav links. Then he did the same thing. Second one. Here. They, the same thing, display flex. By content round. I save these two. Place flex just align items. Align align items. Align items. Enter. All right, this got to work. To the UL, not the U, not the LI. Okay, okay, I got it. All right, my bad. Easy fix, easy fix. We we'll just have to take the class name and put it in the UL instead of the LI. I don't know what I was thinking, but there we go, we fixed it. All right, so now, bam! All right. Um, we're missing width, I think. Yeah, width 40%. Let's see how that chain changes it. Width 40%. Ah. Then list style. Done. Done. Well, has the line underneath? None. That should work. Let's take a look. There we go. All right, so we have the logo and the. Let me think. Uh, you do. Um. List style none. But I'm still seeing the line underneath links. So, how to remove? Uh, line. Yes, from Lincoln CSS. X decoration. Thank you. 
Best decoration, none. Um, maybe we need to like access the link or the specific link. A link. A dev link. Dev link. Then we do the operation like that. Navlink. Hold on, what's Navlinks? Navlink. This. What we're looking for. Maybe we'll look at the style of the link itself. All right, let's give this a class name. Can we give this a class name? Um, link. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe they changed something in the package. Don't know about it. They, they just link that work. Yes. Proud moment. <laughs> Oof. Got a little bit excited there, but uh. <clears throat> Can I say it's a win? All right, so let's see if we can change the font family. Put it to something like, I don't know. What, we, what do we put it to? Well, we don't have much to choose from. Can we grab something off of, all right, I, I know, like, you know, we don't. I don't need to do this, but I really feel like it would add some swag, for lack of a better word. Uh, actually, Adobe Fonts. Adobe. I just need to find something nice. It's written in Spanish and I was a little bit confused as to what that link was, but we got it. Um, I want something. I want something readable, but still gives you a sensation as though something middle, like, like military maybe or something, or maybe something super simple. Okay, let's let's define it here. Uh, Don serif, maybe geometric. Okay. Come on. All right. I don't need to spend too much time on this, so I'm gonna just do it really quickly. So, uh, actually, um, might have to.
figure out how it's done again because I might have forgotten. It again. Uh, add to web project. Um, yeah, fine. Sure. Game one. There it is. Okay, we just didn't pro import this. Right? Grab this. Um, import font SS. I forgot how it's done. Let me. Web fonts. All right, there it is. All right, so we'll just grab this. Add it over here. Then change the URL. Got it. Right here. Now that should effectively change. On family. Um, what are we calling this? What, what's what's the name of it again? Usual. Usual. And if we say font family usual over here, that should be correct, right? Save that. put something other on family let's put something like courier noon would that work yes okay so we just imported it incorrectly or something i don't know okay let's just leave it like that for now um, i'll look into this later but that was a good exploration, nonetheless. Um, I remember I learned how to do it, but I just can't remember exactly how it's done right now. So, um, nothing I want to be bothered with. I'd like to move forward and maybe give a background color to our nav links. Uh, maybe our nav actually or here. Give it a background color and we'll put... Um, Three two seven three. Yeah, I like this color. Um, hashtag. There we go. There it is. All right, and we'll give font the color of. Hashtag F0 of zero. 
but was essentially white. Font color. Font style. No. Font. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it has to be in the link again over here. There it is. All right. Starting to look nice. Websites coming together. All right, so. <clears throat> now, as you can see, every time I click on map one, the map is generating a new each and every time and that's because the map is generated using a for loop but instead what we want to do we want to have it persistent so that it doesn't reload every time we go back to the same page and to do that we have to save it to json now i can do it through html or I, at least i can try because I, i'm not sure i know how to do that yet but it, I didn't do that because the map that we're generating is not something that is super pretty, right? So um, I went into processing and I generated, or I, at least I created a version of a map that is more like something that I'd like to use. Bam. Right? Now that is a map. Okay, so you can tell there's like water, and there's sand, and there's like grasslands, and probably like all mountains. Now, let's say the topography is not a huge deal right now, right? Um, but we can like, yeah, let's pick something that we like. Actually, the first one was really nice, but, uh... Okay, so this is created through Perlin noise, by the way. Kind of bummed about the first one, it was really nice. Um, all right, let's grab this one, all right? So now that I've loaded it over here, uh, the code, essentially what it does it is, is that it saves it automatically to a file, a JSON file. So if we go to the processing folder, and we navigate into the project. We have a data folder over here with a file inside of it that's called. Well, it's doing the error again. Yeah, I remember it did something like that before, but right now I can't remember why it did it. Oh, right, this over here. Save that. Stop it. Reload it. Oh. Tell it. Character con Oh yeah, no, base, that's correct. But there's something else. Right, it was because I was loading it over and over and over again. Essentially that created an error. Um right, so we're just gonna pick the this map. Okay, now we have a JSON file that we can work with. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be copying it. And I'm going to navigate to this, all right? And then I'm going to paste it in here. Can I paste it in here? I can't paste it in here. Um, can I drag and drop it? But hold on. 
Hold on, I don't want to drag and drop it because... Okay. Because that, then it would save it, you know, at its original location. And I don't want it to be saved at its original location. So we're just going to get right a folder over here that we're going to call game one. We're going to paste the JSON file into it. Then we're going to drag that into the map like this. And now we have the JSON inside of... Um, inside of our project. Now what I need to do is to... I need to iterate through this JSON file. And as I iterate through it, I want to output um, well, I want to render the map according to that information. Okay. So first thing I need to know is What's the size of the map? The size of the map is 5335. And the reason why I need to know that is because I'm going to be styling it. I'm going to be styling it um, using a grid and I need to define the columns and the, and the, um, well, the rows, right? But if we look at the map CSS or the map style CSS over here, we can see what I did for our original map, which is the one that you saw earlier, um, the small one, this one. Um, I created a grid template columns and grid template rows, and I defined how the grid is supposed to be looking like. Give it a width, give it a height, uh, which is relative to the size of each and every square. And that's how you, well, that's how we're getting the map over here. So, that said, the, the map that, you're, that we're going to be generating is supposed to come out come up here where map reloaded is seen map reloaded essentially this okay so um i think what we're first going to need to do is to import the data from the json file so we're going to say import uh data from um new dot json now it's imported, okay? Now, what we can do is we can return a return array of divs using Map. I think we need to use the map function, but I just need to double check. Rendering an array dot map and react. I this is dot map function. Okay, so the return Let's see if we can do it like this, right? So it has to be something like um, data dot map. And we open this up and we define a function inside of this, which is supposed to look something like that. Oh, uh, the data and we say oh, oh, oh I got it I got it
All right, so map is being imported correctly. As you can see, we can see um, what the object keys within that folder or within that file are. Um, <clears throat> the only thing is that I just need to familiarize myself with how I'm going to have to render it. And I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to need a class for it. I don't think I'm going to need a class. I don't need a class. What do I need? Um, turn brand stuff. All right, so here what we're doing, for example, if we were to take, um, the old code as a, as a reference, um, we were generating everything using for loops and then storing everything within uh, a map. And the map essentially was taking um, an array of classes no, an array of what is this? An array of divs? Yes, taking an array of divs, which is being returned by this component, then inside of it, we're defining that each object. Add the okay, so don't don't need to map through to return that data in a div like this. Let me let me see what happens if I actually that. Um, probably having a hard time reading it. Or data from uh, Jason. And we. I'm not sure I understand the uh, objects are not valid as a react child I'm not sure I understand this uh, error clearly I've come across this problem once before I was unintentionally including an object in my JSX code that I had expected to be a string value. But I thought that that was what we were doing initially with, uh, with this. Wow, okay, okay, I see what happened. That's uh interesting. So essentially what I did is um I just returned the data from each and every uh key value pair within 
the array of objects and then I outputted it. As uh, as divs essentially, and then I styled all these divs, all these divs, um, according to the information within them. So, for example, the square over here has uh, the coordinates, which is uh, data dot x. Property X does not exist on type. Yes, it does. All right, let's see if we we explicitly defined it over here or declared a variable, for example, the var variable, variable x is data dot x. Because it's an array, so if we say like one, or, uh, yeah, that's what it is. But then, how are we rendering the other one then? One. Okay, I see. All right, here we're dealing with it a little bit differently. We're um, we're declaring that this component or the return of this component is going to have uh, certain values as uh, strings for the attributes that it has within the div. That made sense. <clears throat> and then we're going to use those and the other component and fill them up over there. So this one, this one generates the placeholder or generates the class. And then this one fills it up. That's because we do not have that information yet, right? So once we fill it up over here, all we're doing is outputting it over here so i think i'm not mistaken
Hold on, I need to understand. Hold on. Okay, so I think we need to iterate through the entire thing over here. So what we're going to have to do is something along the lines of two nested for loops. And then um, inside of these four loops, what we do is we define uh, data dot. Oh, sorry, data X. Now x is equal to data x, uh, data i yes, and y is equal to data uh, j, something like this, right? So that when we say x to string, shouldn't give us an error. Is it giving us an error still? Why is it all... Oh. That will... Oh, I think it's because the for loops are incorrect. So let's define them. It's I... So let... I equal to... I think... Start with zero and see what happens. I is less than data the length and I plus plus and then for second one we say let J equal to zero J is less than uh, data dot data dot length and then J yeah I noticed the error don't worry I got it J plus plus. Now after we do that, oh actually we forgot the parentheses over here of the brackets. Okay. And send and then we have to actually declare Okay, so over here we're gonna say um topography X Y. Like so. No? Not taking it? Alright. Maybe we need to define the the type. All right, so we do. They props. Not taking it. All right, it has to be a uh, capital letter over here and. Yeah, still not taking it. Cannot find name props. What? Oh, okay. So it's not props, it's something else. Um. Can it be string or something, for example? What can be the type of um, function parameters TypeScript 
Uh, in TypeScript, I can declare a parameter of a function as a type function. Is there a type safe way to do this? No. All right. So essentially, what I need to know is like what other what other um, what other way can I define these parameters, right? Because they're not props. At least I don't think so. Unless we define them outside, like this. I mean, I can't. I guess this shouldn't hurt if we did that, right? What would happen if we did that? Should fix it. Okay. Eric, how you doing, man? I was about to speak to you in Spanish. ¿Qué tal? Well, hopefully. I have almost figured out um, uh, the well the challenges that I've been facing today. Uh, trabajando en el código también. Genial. How's that going? TypeScript, huh? Um, to be honest, like I was working on the um, the course that I found on Code Academy that taught me how to do TypeScript or how to work with TypeScript, but um, um, yeah, I didn't go through the entire thing mainly because there were like tons of other stuff that I should have like could be doing. Um, here, I'll show you. For example, this is this is the course that I've been taking, right? And these are all the things that I've been doing. And as you can see, like you have a lot of stuff that have to do with CSS and stuff like that, but I just skipped over all of that. It like start getting into the React stuff. And then eventually I went and I arrived to the lifecycle methods and stuff like that, which I found to be really difficult, but um, yeah, so I think that's why I've been taking a break from the courses and starting to practice on like real case scenarios to try to understand how all this works. But um, again, if I go to the catalog, TypeScript, TypeScript. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, actually, I wasn't working on it on this computer. It was a different computer, but essentially, 
Uh, this is this is a course I should be doing. I'm not sure if they teach us that over here type. Nope. Yeah. So yeah, essentially that's uh, what's in my situation right now. Well, I think. I think it shouldn't be a two four loops. I think it just has to be one. Topography equal to data j dot topography. Float. Oh, it's a number. Okay. I thought you could define a, um... A key has flowed, but it apparently not. Here we'll put in topography. Um... Trying to rem trying to remember how I used this ESS. Indeed. Oh, okay, okay. It was it was just to give it a different key so that it wouldn't be um, throwing that error and then select square. Yeah, and then select square essentially has to be something like this, which is what would bring us back to the initial problem that we were having, but at least would be uh, under a better looking um, map, I suppose. Grab the, grab those. And we import state. Import state. That can be difficult in some cases. Well, that's good to know, man, because, um, yeah, I still don't have um, a very solid understanding of TypeScript. I should go through the course and then start going through these, but. Um, Having a hard time finding the time to do that. Where do we import it from? React. So you work on back end, right? How's that going? Do you still do you work um, on the back end with TypeScript as well? All right. Define two functions, same component. Yes, thank God. All right, so now that fixes the problem. Yes, it does. Okay, great. All that's left for us to do missing bracket
Okay, let's see how that looks like. Hopefully it doesn't throw any errors. Okay. 12. If... Everything's rendering, rendering out fine. I should be able to see a console log over here that says something about uh, SFL. That says something about whether or not this has succeeded. So, or actually like it ran, right? Fresh. Whoa. super slow wow thousand nine hundred and forty three objects okay Let's give it some styling. Let's see if that would work, okay? We're gonna make a new CSS file for it, so it would be called um, Map Reloaded. Styles, not CSS. And then we import that into our Map Reloaded component. And essentially what we're going to be doing is something similar to this. Then we're going to say grid, right, um, repeat. Columns, how many columns do we have? 54, I think. Either 54 or 53. Let's roll with 54. And 34 for this. All right, you know what? 53 and 34, if I'm not mistaken. And 20 pixel that. So the width is going to be 1080 by 720. Okay, and then um, we're gonna have to style it as well. Last name. So, um, okay, so we return it. Actually, we uh, return it with um, second and closing div so that we can give it some styling. And the second or the first div is going to have a class name of map map two. Let's just say map two. Two. Not an idea. Not an idea. Class name. So that. Then instead of square. Okay, we say square two. I don't remember where that was. Map contain. I noticed was changing the wrong one. 
uh, this one should be mapped to last reference where we don't have it um, find yet, so we're just gonna leave that. Okay. This is where our map is supposed to show, but it's not showing yet. Okay, now I remember why, because we need to define what each one of these, um, well, I, all right, let me explain it a second, hold on. Grab. Yeah, now I remembered. Okay, so here the idea is, is, is not just to um, avoid having the error that has to do with, you know, not being able to have the same children having the same keys or the same name or whatever. This is what is supposed to specify the uh, ID of each and every square and Using the idea of each and every square, we're going to be able to give the colors to each of the square respectively according to um, the variables or the numbers that we're passing them. If that made sense. Uh, so essentially what we need to do is we need to create some sort of a variable that says if... Topography. No, hold on. Right, we're gonna have to call it something else. Uh, we're just gonna call it topography I, which is stands for like topography initial value. What? Oh, right. So we're gonna have to read here. We're gonna have to redefine it here. Great. That's uh, a lot of places. To define it in. So we're going to say if topography i is less than 3, um, then it's going to have I'll do this for a second and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, we're gonna say let topography i equal to this and then we say if topography i is what? Oh we gotta define this outside here not within the scope right and then we say eh, what? Possibly undefined. Okay, so if the bar of i not equal to null, do this. Right? And not defined. And topography one not equal to not defined. Or undefined, sorry. Then do this. Thank you. All right, so if this is the case, we will say topography equal to, wait for it.
All right, so actually, we return string, right, and saying something like water, or lowercase w, water. Else if, topography i, less than that, turn string that says, and. And you see where I'm going with this. Right, so this is what what essentially does and it helps is that it helps us pass the uh, the the values of the topography key into this conditional over here which um, depending on these values will assign a string which we will then pass as a ID which we will then use to style each and every one of the squares in our map so now if we go into map reloaded styles and then we say something like hashtag water be able to give them colors hashtag stand hashtag Grass. Finally, hashtag mountains or forest, forest, forest. And I'm gonna just gonna copy. Well, you know what? Actually, I'm just gonna give it a. Like very very random background colors which like water is blue uh sand is uh oh. sand is early wood grass is green chartreuse background color of forest is darker all dark olive green that's fine now, if we save those and we look at our map. Huh. Maybe we're defining this. see the elements It can't be that broken, you know? What if we place that if... Right here. Oh.
Do that. Biography. Then find the biography. Ring instead of a number. Okay, so we say topography is equal water, topography, and so on. So, There's something terribly wrong going on over here. Why am I getting water being printed out? Water. Oh, it's because I didn't define the square. Okay. Map styles. Actually, I don't know whether or not that's going to be the problem because it's actually not supposed to be printing out uh, water. But let's see, where did we define square? Square. Square. This is it right over here where the class name is. Um, what we just say change uh, square here to square two, that should fix the problem. Hold on, let me try to rerun the server because um, I don't know what the hell's going on. see the elements for some reason. Now I can see it, but
I have no idea why it's printing out water over here. I mean, it's almost as though Maybe this is throwing it off for some reason. Maybe if we removed that and we ran it. What? <laughs> what is it? Where is it getting water from? Return topography equal to water. And we're saying topography ID is this. I guess um, this is good progress, um, but it's definitely something I'm going to have to give some more time to tomorrow. Um, you know, I, ha I, I hate not being able to finish a stream after having completed the challenge or completed or solved the problem. Um, but you know, that's that's how it is and that's how it goes, I suppose. Um, but we'll come, we'll come back to it tomorrow, hopefully with a fresh mind. And uh, I'll try to go through this again and I'll try to figure, to figure it out. But for today, we ran out of time, unfortunately, and I have to jump off. But I do want to thank everybody to, for, for stopping by, saying hello. Um, so um, hopefully hopefully we'll be able to fix that, uh, that bug we're getting by tomorrow. And I hope to see you there. So see you guys later. Have a good one, guys. Peace.